all right all technologies i have learned in 2023 let me set some context here i am a 2018 computer science undergrad from iit roorkee after working in the industry for a few years the last one year i have worked in two companies for the first 6 months i worked at a web3 wallet for the next 6 months i worked at a cryptocurrency exchange basically built it from scratch with the company i am going to talk a little bit about my roles in both the places and what all technologies that i learned that were new to me and i had not learned before i joined this company theek okay? hai let's get right into it let's roll the clock back around a year ago october november ish is when i joined my first company backpack which is a web3 wallet when i joined this company the company was i think 6 months into initiation or something so there was a code base already there i was actually contributing to the code base uh, from the outside as a open source contributor and then that sort of converted into a full time role when i joined these are the technologies that i learned over the next 6 months number 1 building a chrome extension so backpack is a chrome extension most wallets that you will see are some sort of an extension be it a chrome extension a firefox extension the reason for this is they have to store private keys and they have to interact with something called decentralized applications or dapps for that reason they need to be uh, an extension i did not set this up this was like already set up by the time i joined so i did not spend too much time here but very basic constructs knowing what a manifest file is things like these is something i learned for the first time when i joined backpack number 2 scalable chat systems um, i had done real time communication before this which means how video goes from one person to another in a zoom call i had not done i had done like basic chat systems or you know data transfer but not at this scale so i built the chat system from scratch and to build something like this especially for it to handle a lot of scale you need to you know build it in a distributed fashion so that you know you can have multiple servers all around the world that relay this data in real time that was a new challenge for me i basically architected the whole chat system and put it out there for you know a, a very big event of ours during which the chat was sort of supposed to be spammed so that is something new challenging that i sort of did in these i'd say it was like a month that i spent doing this uh newer clouds so you might have heard of aws uh gcp and azure um when i joined i realized that there's a new fancy cloud technology that these guys use so backpack did not use aws for the longest time it eventually did but when i joined it used something called fly which basically is like a bunch of new companies that are coming up that are trying to replace aws gcp by building much more developer centric developer friendly one line deploy sort of uh, clouds they have their own data centers they rent a bunch of servers throughout have a very nice internal network of wires and they are basically trying to replicate aws on a smaller scale for some niche use case um, fly is one of those companies that's what we had used at backpack and uh, when i joined um, and there was sort of a new experience as to okay a production worthy company has its code deployed not on the three giants but on a new small startup uh, because you know it provides some benefits of ease of deploying and you know scaling up and scaling down things like this cool number 4 auto scaling backends so as i said when i joined we were using fly but midway it in it around february ish is when i moved all the systems from fly to aws there were a few reasons for it you know they were unstable from time to time and it just made sense to move to a more reliable uh, partner right below before the mint the mint happened in march or april something like that mint is like a big event that happened for us and we had to make sure that the systems are really stable during that time for that reason we moved to aws when we moved to aws i learned not for the first time i'd done a little bit of this before but you know how auto scaling systems are built so that if we receive a lot of traffic our systems auto scale up cool uh after that uh, one small thing i didn't really work on but i learned because i looked at the code base was the actual logic to do an nft mint um, if you don't understand this part it's fine it's a very web3 specific concept which is whenever an nft collection is released out in the world you do something called the mint mint basically means it's being released out in the world for the first time and all the code to write that all the code to prevent bots from hitting our servers when that happens was written by someone else but i read through it just to understand how we were trying our best to you know um, prevent attacks like these there was a whole honey pot algorithm that was put there so that people who did try to bot they would lose their money or solana uh, so there were like a bunch of complicated ad hoc logic there to you know prevent as much bots as we could and another thing i learned like i did not implement but learned during this uh, nft mint process was ddos attacks which was denial of service attacks basically a lot of people a lot of bots 
trying to bring your server down uh, because they want to you know do something malicious specifically for us that was they wanted to uh, sweep all the nfts or mint all the nfts so they would try to build a, bring our systems down during the nft mint we had to make sure we were able to prevent that so preventing a ddos attack is another new thing that i learned in the last one year cool this is a checkpoint the checkpoint is okay, i have now worked at this web3 wallet company for six months and these are at a high level the things i've done a lot of my work is open source but you will see around march is when i stopped contributing to backpack the reason was a new team was being created from inside this company to create a new company uh, which was going to be a cryptocurrency exchange it was a stealth mode thingy uh, wasn't supposed to be released for the longest time the exchange just got released last month um, before that it was supposed to be a complete sort of under the radar stealth product for around six months um, the team was really small initially when i joined in march um, there was just one more engineer other than me the cto and i joined as the ciso two people in tech and then a bunch of you know compliance compliance folks and what were we building we were building an exchange like a uh, binance from scratch um, which is a cryptocurrency exchange not a you know stock exchange like zerota a pure web3 cryptocurrency a uh, currency centralized exchange the first thing i learned here was rust never did this before heard it as a jargon but whenever you're writing systems like these like trading systems you need them to be really fast for that you need to use a language like c c++ or rust rust is the one that the team had a lot of experience in i did not so one big thing i learned in these six months was how rust i will build basic, basic normal http apps in uh, rust but more specifically a use case like this uh, a trading system um, in in rust um, the other thing i learned was a lot of finance jargon understanding how you build an exchange how you build margin systems or inside an exchange uh, how you handle uh, a lot of people load uh, how do you bring down the server when you need to things like these a bunch of things standard finance jargon that i should have learned in goldman but since i wasn't in the strat team i did not here i got a lot of that exposure as to how an exchange is built from scratch um compliance kyc bug stuff so any exchange be it you know web3 otherwise needs to have very strong compliance in place so things like asking people for their kyc information making sure they're up to date they're not present in north korea um, or haven't don't have a criminal record things like these are things you need to check before you actually onboard a user all of this flow understanding luckily you don't have to do a lot of this a lot of this is just you know outsourced to other providers but understanding how all of this is done for a core exchange you know a place where you need to be very regulated and compliant make sure you actually let the people who have permissions in if there is a certain country that's blocked you shouldn't let the users of that country in if there is a certain certain country that's you know um, regulated a certain way you need to make sure you ask those people for their address their uh, social security number things like these so that's another new thing i'd never done before um react native so as i said these are like two different companies officially for all purposes uh, a wallet and uh, an exchange but eventually we had to merge the exchange into the wallet um and this part was uh, done by me for the first time i again wrote react native code um again here setting up a react native application from scratch and you know deploying it on the app store and play store has its own set of challenges i luckily did not do that a lot of that was done i just had to come and uh, integrate the exchange into the mobile app so i wouldn't call it like a wholesome experience of you know i'm a react native engineer or a, a mobile engineer today but uh, i understand how to write it which if you know react writing react native with you know when you have existing components and a project out there is much easier um blockchains sweepers and indexers so when you're building an exchange uh, you need to allow people to you know deposit from their cold storage from their uh, crypto wallets and withdraw to their crypto wallets for that you need to index the blockchain what does that mean every transaction that is happening on the blockchain you need to listen to it and if it is a a, a transaction that interests you or is a transaction which is like a deposit inside the exchange for your customers you need to make sure you actually credit the specific user it's similar to if someone um, goes to zerodha and then puts 50000 via google pay that 50000 needs to show up in their zerodha balance similarly in the web3 world you can send bitcoin from your one exchange to another exchange or from your cold storage wallet into the exchange to make sure we actually credit you we need to listen to the blockchain and make sure you, you know every transaction is being monitored building that whole indexing system was also something new i specifically wrote it for ethereum um and lastly monitoring systems specifically very like extremely needed for a system like this to you know do withdrawal very conciliation uh, whether your system is down how much time is it taking for a trade to happen things like these um so that was another new thing that i learned i have had never done before cool this is high level of what i did in the last one year i'd call it a combination of a lot of web3 stuff um 
DevOps and uh, low latency trading systems. That's the high level of the things that I've learned in the past one year. Um, next year, I have a plan of what to learn. Um, a lot of times, most times, at least for me, learning is what the company is doing. Um, and I t- tend to like sort of target slash work in ambitious companies where the stack that's being work- work- worked on is something I've not worked on before. Uh, the next one year, I think at the high level, this is what my learning is going to be. This could totally 100% change based on, you know, what kind of projects I'm working on. Number one, in AI. Specifically, I feel I'll be working on, if I re- really go into the depths of it, uh, a library like uh, Langchain or AutoGPT, basically uh, high-level agent APIs, I feel is is a place where, you know, there are a lot of companies and easy to get hired um, and a lot of space to make movements at this moment because, you know, it's a raw, empty market at the moment and, these are, this is a tweet by Gary Tan somewhere here, which basically talks about the same thing. This is the project to probably look at uh, if you're thinking of getting into AI. Um, fine-tuning models, uh, neural networks, TensorFlow, and generally large language models uh, is something I'm interested in. Uh, so I think that's one thing that's I'm, that I'm going to focus on for the next one year. Um, Web3 may uh, decentralized finance and you know building more, more specific. So I'm, the most interesting part for Web3 for me was DeFi, but did not get a lot of you know chance to work on it last year um, this year i want to you know understand or at least try to build like some variation of how do you build a decentralized exchange centralized exchanges uh and centralized exchanges are like significantly different different and how do you build an exchange that's you know not centralized unless you swap things like these is another sort of interesting challenging problem i feel i might be spending my time on um video streaming so i already know a bunch of video streaming how do you scale video at scale but uh but this comes from like a lot of motivation from we had our first call recently and I realized Zoom basically broke. Um, not the video bits I feel eventually when I talk, talk to people it seems like video was mostly fine, lagged a few places. But like when chat broke a few people's machines because a lot of chat flowed in and you know uh, people's machines blew up. Um, so I think there's a, I don't know if I want to bring it in house. It's a very challenging problem. Uh, but I've done WebRTC or like real time video before. Uh, I feel it might be a solvable problem at least for the small subset of people that we have right now. Um, that's another one. And lastly, scalable cloud execution engines. So this basically is something like Replit. Replit is another thing that we broke during our first live class. So um, I feel I want to bring a lot of these systems in-house for our cohorts. So for that reason, I think I'll be building a few of these systems in the year to come, which is why I feel my learning will peak here. A lot of these things I don't know very well. Uh, for example, uh, scalable cloud execution engine is I've done a little bit before, but if you want to do it at the level of Replit, which means, you know, you support a bunch of stacks and there are a thousand other challenges that will come in building a system like this, I think will be a challenging problem. And I think this, when you see this update video from 2024, I feel you'll see me working on some something uh, in this uh, spectrum of things i've talked about cool that was all for the video hopefully it was an insightful video let me know if there's something you want to learn from all of these technologies anything specific that's not out there happy to put a video on that with that let's send it i'll see you guys in the next one bye bye